Yo, yo, welcome back, everybody. This is the one-year Bible reading. Today's reading is for November 8th. Before we begin, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for another day. Thank you for another opportunity to hear you speak to us through your word. Thank you for your love, your mercies, for your son Jesus who died on the cross for us and rose again from the grave, conquering death and evil and sin and Given us eternal life, Lord. May we always remember that and live boldly and confidently. May we love you with all that we have. May we love our neighbors the same. And may we be willing to serve others. And may we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 1, through chapter 19, verse 14. The word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, again, saying, What do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten our sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. But if a man is just and does what is lawful and right, if he has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, nor approached a woman during her impurity, if he has not oppressed anyone, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and covered the naked with clothing. If he has not exacted usury, nor taken any increase, but has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, and executed true judgment between man and man, if he has walked in my statutes, and kept my judgments faithfully, he is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord God. If he begets a son who is a robber or a shatter of blood, who does any of these things and does none of those duties, but has eaten on the mountains or defiled his neighbor's wife, if he has oppressed the poor and needy, robbed by violence, not restored the pledged, lifted his eyes to the idols, or committed abomination, if he has exacted usury or taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done any of these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood shall be upon him. If, however, he begets a son who sees all the sins which his father has done and considers but does not do likewise, who has not eaten on the mountains, nor lifted his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, has not oppressed anyone, nor withheld a pledge, nor robbed by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing, who has withdrawn his hand from the poor and not received usury or increase, but has executed my judgments and walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live." As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, robbed his brother by violence, and did what is not good among his people, behold, he shall die for his iniquity. Yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes and observed them. He shall surely live. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked man turns from all his sins, which he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him, 
Because of the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live? But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty and the sin which he has committed. Because of them, he shall die. Yet you say, The way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is it not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive, because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of, the, of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair, and your ways which are not fair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, so that iniquity will not be in your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies says the Lord God. Therefore turn and live. Moreover, take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What is your mother? A lioness. She laid down among the lions. Among the, lion, among the young lions, she nourished her cubs. She brought up one of her cubs, and he became a young lion. He learned to catch prey, and he devoured men. The nations also heard of him. He was trapped in their pit, and they brought him with chains to the land of Egypt. When she saw that she waited, that her hope was lost, she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He roved among the lions and became a young lion. He learned to catch prey. He devoured men. He knew their desolate places and laid waste their cities. The land with its fullness was desolated by the noise of his roaring. Then the nations set against him from the provinces on every side and spread their net over him. He was trapped in their pit. They put him in a cage with, with chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him in nets that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches, because of many waters. She had strong branches for scepters of rulers. She towered in stature above the thick branches, and was seen in her height amid the dense foliage. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried her fruit. Her strong branches were broken and withered. The fire consumed them. And now she is planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has come out from a rod of her branches and devoured her fruit, so that she has no strong branch, a scepter for ruling. This is a lamentation and has become a lamentation. The Book of Hebrews, Chapter 9, Verses 1 through 10. Then indeed, 
Even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. But into the second part the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not made was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. Concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. The book of Psalm, chapter 106, verses 32 through 48. They, Israel, angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses on account of them, because they rebelled against his spirit, so that he spoke rashly with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them. But they mingled with the Gentiles and learned their works. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons and shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled by their own works, and played the harlot by their own deeds. Therefore the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people, so that he abhorred his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hand of the Gentiles, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and for their sake he remembered his covenant and relented according to the multitude of his mercies. He also made them to be pitied by all those who carried them away captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles, to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. The Book of Proverbs, Chapter 27 Verse 10. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend, nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. All right, guys. Hope you all have a great day. Hope to see you tomorrow. And may God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen.